All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quick three different sources that are saying that after this Third World War occurs, dealing with the Muslim world and the Zionists, that there will be a pause. And then after that, after that pause, that's when the more massive destruction will occur. So hopefully we can take away from this. Uh, if indeed it's true, I'm going to show you three sources that are saying the same thing. Um we can have a better understanding and be able to plan more accordingly uh, to their plan because it is a plan. All the stuff they have planned, this whole third world war, the coming of the antichrist, that's, this is all their plan. So don't be deceived and think that all this is organic and people really are hating each other like this. This is all instigated from the top. Okay. From these Illuminati people. Uh, this First witness I'm going to give. I'm going to give three different sources. Uh, William Guy Carr, Pawns in the Game. This is where, from my understanding, people get the Albert Pike Three World Wars letter. Uh, it's not actually here written in the letter form, uh, but he does quote a letter from Albert Pike here. And people take from have taken from this, someone took from this, apparently, and worded it in such a way just to present it as an entire letter from Albert Pike. But you can see the language is the same. If you're familiar with that letter, World War II was to be fomented by using, by using the differences between the fascist and political Zionists. The war was to be fought so that Nazism would be destroyed and the power of political Zionism increased so that the sovereign state of Israel could be established in Palestine, so on and so forth. And people have criticized the uh, quote unquote, the letter of Albert Pike as using terminology that was not current in his day, such as Nazism. Okay. Uh, but this was current in the day that he wrote this. He actually was in World War I and World War II, William Guy Carr. Uh, and so, but he is writing about their plan and he doesn't actually begin to quote Albert Pike until here. But he's very, very well researched. You can actually go uh, on YouTube, William Guy Carr, and there's a long, uh, I don't know, it's like an hour-long presentation he does, man. And, I mean, this man, he, first of all, is a God-fearing Christian, man. I mean, he just rattles off. I mean, he's got so much research. I mean, you could tell the guy was super knowledgeable. Uh, he was apparently a, a an intelligence officer in the British Royal Navy. Uh, but when he gets to World War Three, okay, we'll just read it here. World World War Three was to be fomented by using the differences the agents of the Illuminati stir up between political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. So that's what's going on right now. The war is to be directed in such a manner that Islam, the Arab world, including Mohammedism and political Zionism, including the state of Israel, will destroy themselves while at the same time the remaining nations, once more divided against each other on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion, physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. Can any unbiased and reasoning person deny that the intrigue now going on in the near, middle, and far east isn't designed to accomplish this devilish purpose? And here he starts talking about Albert Pike. Well, he's been talking about Albert Pike beforehand. He's saying that this is their plan. Uh, but he actually quotes Albert Pike here. On August 15, 1871, Pike told Mazzini that after, this is the key, after World War III is ended. So this is World War III here that we just read. After World War III is ended, those who aspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. We quote his own written words taken from the letter cataloged in the British Museum Library, London, England. Okay, here's the actual quote. We shall unleash the nihilists and atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and the bloodiest turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity, 
whose deistic spirits will be from that moment without compass, direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out in the public view, a manifestation which will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Okay, so this is their plan. Not only World War III, but apparently after this World War III, then a larger event and the, uh, the breaking down of society, trying to destroy Christianity, uh, trying to destroy the Muslim world, trying to destroy the Zionists, trying to break down everything so that they can create a vacuum and then fill that vacuum with their Luciferianism. Um, and now he goes on to talk here about how Albert Pike says that uh, to the crowd, they say they worship God. You know, the Masons, you know, they have the G and they say that's for God. But it is the God of, that one worships without superstition. The religion should be by all its, all its initiates of the high degrees maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Yes, Lucifer is God. And unfortunately, Adonai, the name given by Luciferians to the God we worship. This is uh, the parenthetical statement is uh, William Guy Carr saying this. <clears throat> He's saying that, that our God, our Christian God, is God also, uh, so Albert Pike says, Lucifer is God and the Christian God is God also, for the absolute can only exist as two gods. Thus the doctrine of Satanism is a heresy and the true pure philosophical religion in, is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai, but Lucifer, God of light and God of good is struggling for humanity against Adonai, the God of darkness and evil. He says this, but they are the ones unleashing all this. <laughs> We serve the one that's for for good while we destroy everything, while we hide in the shadows and don't have open debate. You think they don't have the sway? They have such political power that they could openly have debates on this stuff every day. But instead, they want to bring massive destruction. So they're full of crap. Uh, so this is just one, one, but don't get it twisted. When all this stuff happens, it's the Mason, it's the Illuminati that are behind it. It's this, the Antichrist, the solution, it's problem, reaction, solution. They brought the problem on. They, they caused all this death so that they could break people down and cause them to be desperate. And in that desperation, they'll give them the quote unquote solution in the form of the Antichrist. Uh, so what I want to show you that after World War Three is ended, then they'll provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. OK, so there's apparently going to be this World War Three. The war is to be directed in such a manner that Islam and political Zionism will destroy themselves. It's to be fomented by the differences between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. This is going on right now. That's what that's what's happening. And they're saying after that, then it's going to get worse. There's going to be worse stuff happening than that. So that's the first source. Now we'll look at second source. Next, I'm just going to show you a snippet from Canadian Preppers video, A Wise Man's Warning About What's About to Happen. Uh, and it's Joel Skousen. And he's talking about how this event with Iran and Israel is not going to be the, he calls, it's not going to be World War III is what he says, the terminology he uses. He says there will be uh, a limited exchange, but the actual major war will not occur until after that when China gets ready. So we have that same presentation of a limited war over there, which I, I believe is still going to be a very devastating war. Uh, but then after that, there will be apparently a pause and then the more major war. 
You see, Iran does have a defensive motive. They know that they're in the crosshairs of the globalists and that Israel is the one that's going to start the war. Now, Israel has been trying to provoke an Iran-Israeli war for over three years now by attacking Iranian militia bases in Syria, almost weekly. You have Israeli attacking them, and Iran has done nothing. They haven't taken the bait because they haven't been ready yet, but I think they're now getting ready. So all of the pieces together, Nate, are for a major military third world war, or not third world war, but a Middle East war. But let me assure your listeners, nothing in the Middle East or in the battle of Ukraine is going to create a nuclear war that's going to start World War III. That's only going to start when China's ready to enter the war. And so the trigger event for World War III will really happen in the Far East. The trigger will happen in either Chinese invasion of Taiwan or North Korea responding to U.S. defense of Taiwan by attacking South Korea and U.S. forces as well. That's going to trigger World War III, but only when China's ready. Okay, this video, this man is relaying what was told him. Uh, a military man apparently sat in on a meeting and he was privy to the plan of the Illuminati. And uh, they were discussing this stuff. He had been in several of these uh, higher up meetings, but he wasn't actually uh, one of the Illuminati. But he had been around so much they got used to seeing him. He was in this meeting. They started talking about all this stuff and he heard their plan and so I guess to retain anonymity uh, he told it to this fella and this guy and this is way back in 2010 he is relaying what the man heard and I believe it actually happened uh, but I'll just play what he says the the man actually heard and he's he makes a difference between his speculation and just what the man heard with his own ears in the actual meeting and it'll be an attack uh iran to attack israel uh israel to provoke an attack from iran uh and that would be the world war three that would be the initial uh attack and then there would be these draconian governmental measures these lockdowns then there would be a plague with china uh, and it would spread across the world. And then after that, there would be the larger nuclear war. The first thing that he heard was they were talking about the fact that Israel wasn't, didn't look as if it was getting prepared to attack Iran anytime soon. This was a problem. Even back in June 2005, they were apparently concerned that what it was that was planned on some kind of a timeline wasn't rolling out according to schedule, and this was an issue for them. So that attracted his attention very quickly, because he'd never been in a meeting when this kind of thing was discussed. Then uh, they were talking about China, and how powerful China was getting, both militarily and financially, very quickly and that the Japanese weren't doing what they were supposed to do which was to interfere in some way with the Chinese financial system. They weren't doing that and this was another problem because China was getting too strong too quickly. Other things that were discussed were for example the coming financial crash, the centralization of resources, everything that we saw starting to happen in October 2008. They were planning that and referring to it in their meeting in June 2005. So there was clearly a rollout of some plan here and he was quite shocked the more that he heard and when he really realized what was happening he was extremely shocked and one of the reasons why I'm giving this video presentation now is to soften the blow and interpret this a little tiny bit because it is shocking information. And what I also want to do is I want to try and differentiate out between what it was that he reported, because he'd heard it with his own ears, and what it is that is his speculation and my speculation about how all this fits together. It's very important information. We need to know this stuff. Even though it doesn't look like it's going to be on track, I don't think this will happen. I think that there are a bunch of crazy people there 
who are extremely determined to do something and they were in a hurry and this is important to understand they were in a rush to try and roll out this sequence of events now what he described is what the sequence of events was it starts with Israel attacking Iran now this hasn't happened yet there have been a number of indications that 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 there are forces which are trying to 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 push this into happening. You've only got to follow the news for the last two years to realize that the public is being prepared for a justification for this kind of thing. Iran is being set up as being the bad guys that deserve something to happen to them and so on and so forth. Now, that's going to be the start of what is like the opening gambit in a big chess game. And the plan is to provoke Iran or China to retaliate. And our guy, our source, who is a military man, is privately as convinced as he can be, although this has never been made public and this is not publicly known, that Iran does have nuclear weapons. He believes that they have been provided by China behind the scenes. And all of this is intended because it's all right with these controlling forces that Iran has nuclear weapons because they want them to be used. The plan is for either Iran or for China to retaliate after Iran is struck with a nuclear weapon. At that point, there will be a limited nuclear exchange in the Middle East followed by a ceasefire. He heard this being planned in this meeting. This is being choreographed. It's like the script for a movie. This is exactly what's intended to happen. And during this time, the other thing that's being set up for this, and many people watching this will be aware that this is being set up in the background. We've had a lot of information about this from a number of good researchers from many countries who are reporting this on the internet that things are being set up in many of the western countries for there to be heavy controls over populations martial law increased powers on um, security forces who are not just the uh, the army or the police but in britain for example our source said that he knew he absolutely knew personally for a fact that a very large number of private security people, their powers were being increased to give them um, the ability to arrest people, the ability to detain, the ability to handle riots in streets. And here we're talking about just regular people working in private security. People who give the parking tickets on the streets, their powers are being increased in the same way. And uh, last year, we heard President Obama talking about how he wanted to have a sort of national guard at home in America ready to handle this kind of thing. There are a lot of indicators that this is being set up. And in this rollout of this crazy scenario where it is intended that there will be a limited nuclear exchange in the Middle East, the idea is that as the world looks upon this with horror, then they will demand from their governments that there are heavy controls over travel, over communication, over people who meet, over people who protest in the streets. They want to make sure that they don't have uh, crazy bombers on airplanes, crazy bombers in the shopping malls. They want to make sure, and because people will be driven into fear by this, they'll request and demand and insist on heavy controls from their governments, which will be justified. And this is where you're going to kind of get the martial law situation in all the Western countries. It's intended as a justification. All of this is just the start of something because this story gets much bigger and it's pretty horrifying. And if watching this now you're feeling a little bit shocked, this is how I was feeling when I heard this information and this is how our source was feeling when he was hearing this information in this meeting because this is just the beginning. Now, during the time of this ceasefire, everyone's shocked 
Everyone's frightened. Everyone's really terrified about where this is going to go. There are all kinds of heavy controls over populations everywhere. And then the next thing that happens in this, in this chess game that's being played is that biological weapons are released on China. He heard this being discussed in this meeting. They will release a flu-like virus that will be genetically targeted against the Chinese population. It's racially targeted against the Chinese people. It's designed to spread like wildfire and to knock out a large number of the Chinese people. And these people in this meeting were laughing about this. They said, China will catch a cold. Those were their words. China will catch a cold. And they were laughing about the fact that these biological weapons will, will wreak havoc among the Chinese population. And after that, then what effectively will be a kind of plague will actually spread right across the world to the West as well. And I saw it was not clear whether this was a Chinese retaliation or whether the thing would just spread out of control in the way that it would be very understandable if it did, whether it's racially targeted or not, these things actually mutate. So now you've got a situation where there's been a limited nuclear war in the Middle East. There's a pandemic that really is sweeping across the world and really is killing people very visibly. And you've got this totalitarian military lockdown in all the governments in the Western worlds because everyone's going to be in panic about all of this. And then, he said, then the real war starts. Something that would be justifiably called the Third World War with a much more major nuclear exchange. And at this point, I asked him, is this just about population reduction. What is this about? Why are they doing this? Why this insane Dr. Strangelove plan for just unleashing all of this stuff on the world? Why do it? Now, as our conversation went on, I started to, to, to find answers to those questions. Now, some of this is speculation. I want to share this speculation with you because it's important enough that we work together here to figure out what's going on. And there are some clues, there are some very important clues that I'm going to present to you here in this video. He said, absolutely, it's about population reduction. So I said, well, in this meeting, did they mention any figures? And he said, yes, they did, 